हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो टुडे वी विल स्टडी बी एस सी आई टी सेमेस्टर सिक्स पी जी आई एस दैट इज प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ जोग्राफिक इन्फॉर्मेशन सिस्टम यूनिट नंबर थ्री चैप्टर नंबर फोर स्पेशल रेफरेंसिंग एंड पोजिशनिंग सो आई एम पुष्पा महापात्रो एंड आई एम असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन द चैप्टर नंबर फोर सो चैप्टर नंबर फोर बेसिकली डिस्कस अबाउट द entire world its structure its organization which coordinate systems we are using and how satellite positioning techniques are integrated with the with each other so it happens like gis are combining special data from different countries with the global spatial data sets because each country they do their own study but when we have to study the neighboring countries then we have to combine the special data that is collected from the neighboring countries and we have to do the combined study so special referencing means it is one of the defining features of gis and their ability to combine special reference data a frequently occurring issue is the need to combine special data from different sources that use different special referencing systems means that different countries they are doing their own study so they have already collected the spatial data they have there are lots and lots of images maps that are stored in the data uh, in the form of data sets now what we have to do if we have to combine then it may happen that we have to combine the data that is from different sources now reference surface for mapping so for the entire world we can use two reference surface for mapping one is the geoid and the ellipsoid so here what we do is our earth is not at all uniform it is having somewhere mountains somewhere we are having valleys so what we have to do it is very very difficult to approximate a surface for the earth because somewhere it is very much higher because of mountain and somewhere it is very much low because of the deep sea so what we can do we can use two main surfaces which will be used for the as a reference surface for the study so one is the geoid so geoid is the reference surface of the earth now here we have shown you the diagram for geoid earth surface and ellipsoid the earth surface as you can see there is a mountain and then there is a bottom of the sea so the sea surface is covered with water so a water surface is also present and this water surface is not constant it is sometimes high sometimes low low so it means it keeps on changing but we also have the bottom of the sea so what we can do is we can approximate a surface we call it as the geoid surface as you can see in the diagram and it will move below the mountain but it will move above the surface of the sea so this type of blue line is used to approximate the surface of the earth then we have an ellipsoid ellipsoid means a regular sphere type of surface can be used for the entire world so this ellipsoid is used for all types of calculations so basically two surfaces are used geoid and ellipsoid so the geoid and the vertical datum so entire earth is covered by water resultant water it is attracted due to gravity and because of gravity the shape of uh, the earth it is not uniform and sometimes because of the mass distribution of the earth we have a it has the effect on the entire surface so um, the shape of the earth it has it is different in different places and the mass distribution is also not uniform so the geoid we can see the geoid in the diagram so geoid somewhat looks like this and it is non uniform wherever we have land there that uh, structure is different wherever we have sea the structure is different so this type of geoid is the actual surface it is the actual approximation of the earth surface so due to, due to irregularities or mass anomalies in this distribution the global ocean results in an undulated surface and this geoid the plumb line through any surface point is always perpendicular to it so we have to at any surface we can draw a line which is perpendicular to the surface we call it as the plumb line now we can uh, identify the 
surface of the sea. So for that we can put sensors at various places. So this shows the Amsterdam tide calls. We have sensors. These sensors are connected to one another and using the sensors we can find out the sea level, sea water level. So the, uh, we determine the height of a point in the initially with respect to Amsterdam tide calls using the technique known as geodetic labeling. So it will find out the sea level at different point of time and we can take the mean and we call it as the mean sea level and then using this sea, mean sea level we can find out the height of mountains and we always say that the height of the mountain is this with respect to the mean sea level. So this mean sea level is calculated using the sensors. Local vertical datum. So local vertical datum, we first try to find out the local mean sea level, also called the local vertical datum. It is parallel to the geoid but offset by a couple of meters. So this offset is due to the local phenomena such as ocean current, tide, coastal wind, water temperature and salinity at the location of tide gauze. It means that we have uh, different characteristics of water at different places and because of which the height of water keeps on increasing or decreasing. So what we have to do is we have to take a mean of all the values. So care should be taken while using height from another local vertical for, uh, datum. For example, this might be the case in border areas of adjacent nations. So when we are talking, um, trying to combine two different maps at that time, the heights may be different. For the same surface, the heights may be different. So we need to take care when we are combining the neighboring maps. Now, Geodetic labeling. The local vertical datum is implemented through a labeling network. A labeling network consists of benchmark whose height above mean sea level has been determined through geodetic labeling. The implementation of the datum enable easy user access. This can be used. Mm -hmm. uh, they can use the benchmark of labeling network and we can find out the point that is closest to our area of interest. Now, as a result of satellite gravity mission, it is currently possible to determine the height h above the geoid with centimeter level accuracy. It is forcible that the global vertical datum may become obtuse in next 10 to 15 years. So if the published map are also using the global vertical datum, by that time heights will become globally comparable, effectively making vertical datum redundant to the user. So we have to cal do the calculations properly. So the oblate ellipsoid we will see in the next video. Thank you.